Hello, my creative friends. Yes, I called you creative because that is what you are. Usually when we think of creativity, it's painting or writing or singing, and that's true, but we can definitely be creative through art, but there's so much more to creativity than just paint or music. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you are made in God's image. You see, God's creativity is indescribable. It's limitless. It goes beyond what we could ever imagine. So if we are made in God's image, we are creative. And that's our big idea for today. God created you so that you can be creative. Are you guys ready for our game? We're going to test how creative you are. All you need for this game is anything that you can build with. Legos, linking logs, building blocks, cups, whatever you have in your house that you can build with. What can make this more fun is getting your family involved and making it a building competition. Whoever in your family can build the tallest tower in 30 seconds wins. Press pause and grab your supplies. Ready, set, go. Before we move on to worship, let's read our Bible verse for the month. Psalm 145, 3. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Now stand up. It's time to worship God. <laughs> You with me in the darkest valley. You with me on the mountain top. I'm thankful that you never leave me and that your love will never stop. Help me to be who you've been to me, to everyone I see. Let us love one another. Thank you for being a friend who's always by 
with one more stroke of my Sharpie. Voila, magnifique. My self-portrait is complete. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh, hey guys, didn't see you there. It's me, Jacob. Wait until you see my masterpiece. It's, in a word, indescribable. Oh, wait, can you tell which one is even the real me? It, yeah, we even have, we have the same smile. Okay, maybe painting's not my thing, but that doesn't mean I'm not filled with creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. So even though I may not be a very gifted portraitist, clearly, I am still a masterpiece. I'm smiling mysteriously because no one knows I put salt in the sugar bowl. <coughs> but really, I'm a masterpiece because I was made by God. And you know what else? You are a masterpiece because you were made by God. The creator of the entire universe took the time to paint you. And you are unique. You have unique fingerprints and toe prints and a unique tongue print. So what does that mean for you now that you know you're a masterpiece. What do we do now? You'll find out in today's story. See you in a few. Oh, you're leaving. Okay, I'll just hang here on the wall because I'm just a, a painting. Okay, this is, this, this is getting creepy, right? Is this creepy or funny? No, it's creepy. This is creepy, I'm sorry. This is creepy. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. When the Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the believers in Ephesus, he told them, We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Let's see how that might play out in someone's life today. Nora Gray followed her older cousin, Sadie, around the pottery studio. Clay dust danced in the sunbeams from high up windows. So I just stay at the desk? Working at the Earth and Fire studio was Nora's first real job, and she wanted to get it right. Sadie grinned and pushed back her hair with a clay flecked hand. Mostly. A bunch of artists have memberships here, so they can use all the equipment and materials. You'll answer questions, take calls, make orders when supplies run out, things like that. What's in there? Nora pointed to an open door near the back of the studio. Oh yes, the closet. Nora led the way over. Sadie peered inside. Wow. The narrow room was lined on both sides with high shelves. Every shelf and every inch of floor space was cramped with a jumble of tools, containers of clay and glazes, cleaning supplies, and pieces of pottery, finished and unfinished. How do you find anything? So many people use the closet. Everyone just kind of has their own system. Nora didn't think the disaster in the closet qualified as a system, but before she could say anything. Oh, I gotta take this. Hello? Oh, hold on a sec. Where did I put my pen? Frazzled, Sadie checked her pockets. Nora quickly pulled a pen and notepad out of her neatly organized backpack. Would this work? Sadie snatched the pen and paper, mouthing, thank you and headed for the desk. Nora surveyed the room. There were at least a dozen artists at work. You a butter too? Nora turned to see an older gentleman with a streak of clay in his curly white hair. His long frame bent nearly double over the nearest pottery wheel. Me? No. Oh, I think everyone's an artist of some kind. I can't even draw a stick figure. 
Sadie's just letting me work here till I go to college in the fall. Nelson centered a lump of clay on his wheel. You'll see me here most every morning. I'm Nelson. Nora. Real nice to have you here. I'm uh, working on a coffee mug if you'd like to watch. Nora watched, mesmerized, as the spinning clay morphed from a stodgy lump to a smooth cylinder under Nelson's practice hands. I wish I could make beautiful things like that. You want to take a turn? Sadie tried to teach me. It was a disaster. Nelson smiled, hands still working the clay. I happen to believe that God made each of us to create beautiful things that matter. You'll find your spot. Nora nodded, but she didn't think she'd ever create a piece of art that could make someone smile. Nora, I want to show you the kiln. Sadie reappeared, and Nora spent the rest of the day learning the ropes of her new job. By early evening, the studio had cleared out. You go home. I can lock up at six, just like you showed me. Well... And I can order more blue glaze, like you said. Well, if you think you got this, that would be great. I can get home early for dinner with the kids. I'm good. Go, shoo. With a wave, Sadie hurried out. Nora opened the supplier's webpage and started to order for glaze. Hmm, I bet there's still blue glaze in the closet somewhere. Nora opened the door and clicked on the light. The mess looked even worse than it had that morning. Is this glaze? Oh, it's those cans. And there's some over here and up there. Nora edged her way around, collecting cans. There's no way to know what's really here unless I can get it all together. I should clear a space. And I should stack those crates to group the colors. Every time Nora moved one can or tool, she discovered six more that needed a place to go. All the cleaning supplies can go down here, modeling tools and loops over there by the door. That's definitely trash. Oh, and there should be a spot for each artist to put their pieces that still need to be glazed. One thing led to another, and another, and another. Nora finally realized she was hungry. Hmm, where did I set my phone? Oh, here, 9.30. Nora had been so focused on organizing the closet, she had completely lost track of time. She glanced with satisfaction at the crate containing five cans of blue glaze. At least I don't need to order more glaze. The next morning, Nora arrived a few minutes late. She rushed in, apologetic. I'm so sorry, Sadie. I... Nora broke off as she saw Sadie, Nelson, and several other artists grouped around the closet door. Nora, did you do this? Um, yeah, uh, I should have asked. Nora, this is amazing! Nora took a step forward to take a good look at what she's done. Glazes and clay, tools and supplies, everything had its own spot in a orderly rhythm. With the morning light streaming in, it did look pretty cool. Nelson grinned. Oh, it's beautiful, Nora. A real work of art. A younger woman with hair knotted on top of her head chimed in. Plus, we can find stuff now. I thought I'd lost this set of mugs. You've made our work a lot easier. Really? I guess. I thought anyone could do this. No way. You have a real gift. Can I organize the front desk? Please, I'm raising your pay. Nora happily tackled her next project, a well-organized desk. She was grateful to discover the truth of Ephesians 2.10 in her own life. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now, we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. The Apostle Paul wrote, We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Whoa, that's a lot. We are God's creation. Yeah, we covered that. You are a masterpiece of God created in his image. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. 
We were created to have a relationship with God, and that's only possible because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So, what do we do now? Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Now we can do good works. You were created, designed, and shaped to use what God has given you to do good things and love other people. The question is, how will you use your creativity to do that? Maybe you're an artiste, or maybe you're creative in some other ways. You can solve a complicated math problem, or design the best doghouse ever, or you're a peacekeeper, and you can creatively help people work through an argument. There are so many different ways to be creative, and I know you're creative because God made you in His image, and no one's more creative than Him. So here's the thing to remember today. God created you so you can be creative. If you know where you're most creative, find ways to use your creativity to do good things. Make people happy or make a difference in the world. If you're not sure where you're creative, you just gotta look a little bit closer. Think about what you like to do or ask a parent or someone you trust what creative things they see in you. And no matter what, ask God to show you how to use your creativity in the best way. Be the masterpiece he created you to be. I reckon that's about all there is to say about that. I reckon you're right. I wonder if I could use this pitchfork here to roast three marshmallows at the same time. I'll see you next time. I reckon. What a great story we heard today. It's amazing to know that God created us so that we can be creative. There's so many gifts and unique talents that God has given us to use to help others and show love to other people. I have a question for you. This week, how could you use your creativity to show others who God is and what he's like? Press pause and discuss this with your family. For our last activity, all you need is a piece of paper and something to draw or color with. Feel free to pause the video and grab your supplies. Start with tracing your hand on a piece of paper. As you are tracing your handprint, remember that we are God's handiwork. We are his masterpiece, his favorite creation, and his best work of art. When you are done tracing your hands, let's think of all the ways that we are creative. Are you good at art, dancing, or music? Maybe you're good at solving puzzles, building amazing things with blocks, being a whiz at technology, thinking of ways you can help animals, caring for others in the world that God has made, cheering up someone who's sad, or, or helping friends to get along. Now that we've brainstormed through some ways that we are creative, draw or write those things within your handprint. For me, I'm gonna write, coming up with fun things for my kids to do while we're at home all day long. Now press pause and write or draw on your handprint. Great job on your handprint, friends. Remember that God created you so that you can be creative. Next week, we're going to learn how God created you for a purpose. See you next week. Bye.